My name is Patricia Spears-Jones. The poem is Lave. Where is the lavender, the purple scent, that says the world is fresh and ready to receive? The woman who walks into whatever room she walks into. What room will she enter? How will the female worker smell? Lemon, mint, roses crushed for homemade soap. No place here for the boiling recipe. There is no room. And her extra money, how will she make it? Who will she do for? How will she get there? Will she find her old friends, her lovers? She is lonely. The artist says in panel 57 that the female worker, not Negro, not migrant, is the last group to leave the South. One woman is her own group. Was she ready to leave or was she left behind, caring for baby, grandfather, brother, sister, cousin, and elderly aunt? Was her garden where the family sought nurture? Were her skills at picking cotton so great the bosses did all they could to keep her? Was there a fourth child not wished for? Much about the South is unseen or not shown. The painter understands the usefulness of obscenity. Lynching, hunger, the crops failing, bow weevil, bow weevil. And so we see the cotton ball, but not the bleeding hands that pick. We see the rope dangling. We see the meager rations of meat and bread and the table set, no plenty. Is this the start of a woman's true blues? The men go ahead, the women stay behind, and everyone is lonely? In many of the paintings, planes, she is not seen preparing the meals, cleaning, sewing, packing clothes to last for as long as they can last in the distant cities of Chicago, Pittsburgh, Detroit. She is not seen crying at the preacher's table or burying her head into the broad chest of the man who gets up before sunrise to make it to the station, ticket in hand. The men knew the hardships ahead. Others were ignorant enough to believe the stories of plenty, work, food, shelter. Women put no truck in these white men's promises. They wanted out of Dixie on a very bad day, wanted out of stuck. She will leave for the north and go to the city. She will find the church where her Bible meets the preacher's holy hollering and the music sounds as sweet as in the backwoods. She will see the kind of dresses she wanted to make from the butterick patterns at the notion's counter, the same counter where she finds the yellow ribbons that tie the braids of the young girl in painting 21, who arrived early to get on that northbound train. Is this the start of another woman's blues? To journey north and find the men mired? To journey north and find her skills unknown? To journey north and discover an even greater loneliness? The female worker gets that ticket and joins that motion forward, the many shoulders, legs, hands stretched across the painting's frames, counting the rails away, away, away from Dixieland. Head bowed, holding an orange dolly, the laundress is charged with purgation, removing the dust and dirt and stains of city living, the marks of many sins, sex, drink, the opium den, these swirling oblongs, colors, rest, beneath her gaze as if she has the power to make this job seem better than picking cotton 
or hog butchering or taking in washing for the old gentleman who pinches her breast for that extra nickel? Last to arrive north, but first to see the way home to make a home. Put her skillets on the hot plate, shelves her mason jars full of peach preserves, pickles, taste of home. Chanel spreads on the lumpy mattresses, the Chicago Defender on a kitchen table, biscuits rising before sunrise, greens found in an Italian market. She stands in this painting, a cruciform of desire, in a center of beauty, dressed in white, the orange stick, her cudgel, her sword, the laundry, her step on that ladder to the future, a migrant from the back of the bottom, or a town just big enough for the railroad to notice. Gone to the city and its bitter possibilities, so that church is a hearthstone, and eau de cologne, lavender, roses, vanilla, hints of a necessity.